pesto egg pockets, a delicious puff pastry baked square. They're great for breakfast and you can just grab them and go to work, school, a movie, <laughs> wherever you wanna go, you can take these with you. So I'm starting by scrambling some eggs. I just whisked six eggs with salt and pepper and I put them into a skillet with some melted butter. And I'm going to just go ahead and add some spinach and start to give it a stir. And this is a good time to whip out the pesto. I was trying to be all fancy and I put the jarred pesto into a bowl. I should have just kept it in the jar so you really could have seen the store-bought nature of the pesto, but I'm adding quite a bit as you can see. Okay, so basically I'm just stirring the eggs and I'm gonna cook them until the eggs are set and it's really not gonna take long because this skillet was nice and hot. Look at this egg mixture. Delicious. Very green. Very green, very wonderful. So the eggs are pretty much cooked. So this is a good time to add the cheese and I am using Fontina. I grated it myself just to make sure it's extra creamy. But you could do pepper jack cheese. You could do like a kind of a Tex-Mex version of these eggs where, you know, you add some peppers and chilies. These eggs are pretty much done. Check them out. Wow. As green as green can be, as cheesy as cheesy can be. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting them into a single layer. I'll turn off the heat. And now I'm gonna build the pockets. And I'm using store-bought puff pastry, which comes frozen. I thawed it overnight, and then I cut it into rectangles. And grab approximately one-sixth of the egg mixture. <laughs> Woo, gosh, and get it right in the middle of Ideally, if you have time, you can let this mixture cool just a little bit, but we never have time for such things, do we? <laughs> no. And just leave a little border around the edge. And then for the ham, I've got really small little pieces of deli ham, and I'm just folding them over twice and put them right there. So check that out, Alex. Yum. And then I'm gonna brush an egg wash, which is just egg beaten with a little water all around the edge. I may have filled this a little bit too full. <laughs> Maybe hard to close it. I, I'm not gonna say I filled it too full. I'm gonna say I was very optimistic, which is a good place to be. I'm gonna take the second puff pastry rectangle and then just put it on top, let the edges meet up. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yes, eggs are coming out the side of that, but that's okay. And then I've got a fork and I'll crimp it shut, and that should take care of that little egg issue over on the side. <laughs> Puff pastry, by definition, puffs quite a bit when it bakes. So if you don't put enough filling in it, you're gonna have a whole lot of bread, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on a sheet pan with parchment, and now I'm gonna build five more just like this. Got them all built. And before they go into the oven, I'm gonna brush the rest of the egg wash. This just helps the surface of the puff pastry look really pretty and keeps it from looking too dry. All right, so Alex, check it out real quick before we go to the oven. See? Wow, they look awesome. All right, let's go ahead and put them in. I forgot to sprinkle on everything bagel seasoning. <laughs> You should do this after you brush on the egg wash. All right, those look good. So back into the 400 degree oven and we'll see you back here when they're ready. All right, the pesto pastry puffs are ready. Check these out, Alex, before you go. Wow, those they look so good. They smell amazing. They smell of pesto and pure bliss. I'm gonna get them right onto a platter. Perfect little pesto pastry puffs. They look so good. You know what? I think we need to eat one. There's no way we can't cut into one of these. So you can see what they're all about.
All right. You want to come in for the magic? Wow. I can't speak. They smell so good. The combination of the pesto and that bagel seasoning. Oh my goodness. That is truly delicious. A Tex-Mex frittata. It is scrumptious, seriously perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I've been grating some pepper jack cheese. Perfect for a Tex-Mex frittata, I think. And I'm gonna get all of the frittata ingredients into the skillet. I've got some thinly sliced Yukon gold potatoes and some sliced red onion, a couple colors of bell pepper, and then garlic and jalapeno. Everything goes in the pan, it's so easy. You don't have to saute the vegetables at different stages. Okay, I'm gonna season the veggies with some salt and pepper and a little bit of ground cumin really enhances that Tex-Mex flavor. This is a pretty combination of veggies. Okay, I'm gonna let these keep cooking and I'm gonna whip up the egg mixture. I've got eight eggs and I'm just gonna give them a little beat with a fork. And then I love to add salsa to eggs. I've got a quarter cup of jarred salsa. I can't remember the last time I ate a fried egg or scrambled eggs without putting salsa or hot sauce on top. Now I'm gonna put all of this grated pepper jack straight into the egg and salsa mixture. Okay, that's all mixed together. And I'm gonna pour the egg and salsa and cheese mixture all over the veggies and it's gonna kind of seep down in between everything. Okay, now I'm gonna cook the frittata so it sets on the top and the bottom. It'll take about five minutes to set the bottom and then I'll put it under the broiler on the middle rack for another five minutes to set the top. It sure smells great. Oh, it sure looks great. Wow. I wanna get that straight out of the skillet before it sticks. I play my cards right. It should slip right out. There we go. So this turned out very well. I'm gonna cut a nice big wedge. It's kind of a thin frittata, so I'm gonna go wide with the slice. Oh, it smells so good. And look how pretty it is. Got some avocado and sliced cherry tomatoes. And I love to put a little spoonful of sour cream on top. And cilantro is perfect. Just sprinkle leaves all over. That is a beautiful Tex-Mex frittata. I have had so much fun talking you through some meatless marvels. I think it's time for me to stop talking and start eating. So if you've never made pesto eggs before, you need two things, pesto and peanut butter. <laughs> no, and, and eggs. The reason that pesto eggs are a thing is that the pesto actually has oil as the base. So it serves as the oil or butter for the eggs. So I've got two eggs already cracked and when the pesto is heated up, the eggs go in. So while the eggs cook, I'm gonna get the toast ready. It is very simple. I've just got a really good piece of thick sliced sourdough. And I've got some roasted garlic aioli which is kind of a fancy way of saying mayonnaise, but it's got roasted garlic in it. Oh man, oh man. Then I've got some sliced Gouda cheese. Is it Gouda? It's really Gouda. <laughs> and I'm spreading it on top. And then come with me, Alex. We're gonna put this under the broiler. So I'm going to put it under the broiler until the cheese melts and it's pretty bubbly. That's not going to take very long. So hopefully <laughs> the eggs will be done by the time the toast is ready. So I'm going to sprinkle some salt and pepper over the eggs. And then I've also got some crushed red pepper flakes just to add a little bit of heat. Crucial. Sprinkle those over the eggs. And then they are sizzling away, so I'm actually gonna flip them. You dare me? Oh gosh, oh, do you not. Won't. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> do it. You can no, do it. I better not. I'll I don't do wanna it. show off. Actually, I might. 
Oh, no. no way. All right, you can use a spatula to flip, or you can just use the wrist that God gave you. Woo! Wow. Okay, let's go get the toast out of the oven. The eggs are going to be ready any second. What do you think this cheese looks like? Bubble. Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> yep, it looks Whoa. Gouda. Gouda. Of all the things we have made, this is my favorite of all time. Whoa. Wow, that's a <laughs> Cheese bold toast. statement. Look at this. Wow. Absolutely stunning. All right, but I'm not finished yet. I've got some beautiful heirloom tomatoes that I sliced, and I'll just put a piece of basil in between each slice. Okay. And then come the pesto eggs <laughs> right over top. Oh, I forgot sea salt. I probably should have put that on the uh, tomatoes, but oh well. All right, pesto egg toast. I'm gonna make a batch of ready-to-go egg bites. I've been browning some Mexican chorizo sausage with some finely diced onion. So I'll go ahead and turn the skillet off, and I'm gonna make the egg mixture for the egg bites. It starts with four eggs, and I wanna make it really creamy, so in goes a quarter cup of heavy cream and a quarter cup of sour cream, and then some salt and pepper, and that is as complicated as the egg mixture goes. This is a great recipe because you can do so many different versions. Imagine anything that you would put in an omelet, and that's what you can put in a ready-to-go egg bite. Now, to assemble them and get them ready for the multi-cooker, I'm gonna use one of these great molds. You can get them online. And I sprayed it, and I'll take a couple of spoonfuls of the chorizo and onion mixture, and then a little pinch of grated Monterey Jack cheese. And then all you have to do is just pour enough egg mixture to reach just below the rim. Okay, now I'm gonna do six more exactly the same way. Okay, the mold is all filled. I'm gonna cover the top with foil just to get it all secure in there. Okay, now before I put this into the multi-cooker, I'm gonna put in the little trivet. It comes with it. And I'll pour some water into the machine. And then I'll just carefully lower the mold into the machine. And the lid goes on. And now I'm all set. So it's ready, steady, cook. I'll switch the pressure valve to ceiling, press steam, and set the timer for 10 minutes. Then let the pressure release naturally for 10 minutes. And use a wooden spoon to set the valve to venting for quick release of the pressure. Okay, now that all the pressure is released, I can take them out of the multi-cooker. Oh, look at that steam. That's a very good sign. So I can grab the rim of the pan. Ooh, it's nice and steamy. So I'm gonna take off the foil and look at what's underneath. Now, if I play my cards right, <laughs> they will slide right out. I love it when they come out in one piece. I've got some butter in a skillet and I'm just adding scrambled eggs, whipped eggs, with some salt and pepper. And then I have a bunch of chopped chives, which is a very springy ingredient. I'm just gonna stir the eggs and cook them slowly over medium heat until they're scrambled. Mmm, these look good. I was noticing when they were scrambling just how beautiful and fluffy they look. Mm. There's something about scrambled eggs with chives that, weakness of mine, I just love them. So I'm putting them into a bowl and then I'm gonna add some ham. I didn't wanna add the ham to the skillet because I didn't wanna contribute to everything being hot, 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 and the ham is already cooked. So the ham's gonna kind of help cool things down so that I can add the cheese because these are cheesy ham and egg ham pies. Mm. And then I'll just toss, and by now the eggs are kind of cool enough that it's not gonna turn the cheese into a melty, stringy mess. 
Mmm. <laughs> I could just eat this. Okay, so now I'm gonna make the pockets. So I'm using puff pastry, and I thawed out two sheets and then cut them into 12 squares of equal size. And I'm gonna get a spoon, get a big scoop of the egg mixture. Pretty generous, because I mean, if you're gonna grab a cheesy ham and egg hand pie, you definitely wanna have the cheese ham and eggs inside. <laughs> you don't wanna miss them. So then I have a little bit of an egg wash, just egg and water. And I'm gonna brush the rim pretty generously because this acts as sort of a glue. Okay, then a second square. And when you put it on, you kind of want to stretch it just a little bit to make sure that it's gonna meet the edges. You wanna look at this up close, Alex? So you can meet the edges of the pastry. Mm -hmm. and Just meet them up, press them together, kind of force out any air bubbles that are forming in the center. Take a fork, press all along the edge just to crimp everything together. Okay, so that is one cute little pocket or hand pie. I'm gonna put this on the tray and do five more just like it. All right, I got them all assembled. So I'm brushing the egg wash all over the surface and that's gonna help them stay pretty when they bake. Okay, so then just to give them a little bit of decoration and crunch on top, I'm gonna to sprinkle on some poppy seeds. Okay, let's go put these in the oven. 400 degrees, 20 minutes. Look at these, Alex. Oh, wow. So let's take a look. Mm. How do they look? They look amazing, they're oh, so fluffy. Oh, wow, gorgeous. I've got eight potatoes that I baked at 400 for about 45 minutes or so. I baked them until they were just tender. They're totally cooled, so they're really easy to grate. If they were still hot, I wouldn't be able to hold on to them. The grated potatoes are gonna wind up looking like little nests, and then I crack an egg in. They're so adorable. All right, I got all the potatoes grated, which is a good thing because the grater is totally full. So I'll just fish all of them out of there. <laughs> they are packed. Okay, now this is a lot of potatoes, so I'm gonna season them pretty well with plenty of salt. I'll just toss them around with my fingers and plenty of pepper. And when these bake, they're gonna get nice and crisp. I just love these things, so good. All right, now I've got two muffin pans and to make sure the nests don't stick, I'm gonna spray them really, really well with cooking spray. All right, the second one. And now I'll make the nests. I'm gonna take about three to four tablespoons of the potato mixture and put it into one of the muffin tins. Then I'll use my fingers to really, really lightly press it so it goes around the sides. You wanna get little jagged edges of potatoes on the sides. That's what makes it look like a nest. All right, one tray of nests done, one more to go. That's a lot of nests. All right, now the very last thing, I'm gonna spray the tops really lightly with just a little more cooking spray. That'll help them get nice and crisp and sizzly in the oven. All right, I'm gonna pop these into a 450 degree oven for just about 15 or 20 minutes. They're gonna start to get a little bit crisp and golden brown. Oh yeah, these look good. Starting to get nice and crisp around the edges. Mmm, I smell that potato, yum. All right, now I'm gonna let these cool. This is such a cool little dish, so cute and so delicious. All right, I'm just gonna crack an egg and drop it into each cup. All right, now I've got a lot more to do, so I better get cracking. All right, now I'm just gonna sprinkle these with salt and pepper. Ooh, these look good. Plenty of pepper, I like pepper on my eggs. All right, now these just need to go into a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. 